we're about to see the biggest banking scandal the world has ever seen that will dwarf what we saw unfold in 2007 that continues to wreak havoc on the world's economies has begun to unfold and in the coming days will make its true effects known both past, present, and future. It involves bank rate manipulation and the deregulation of our banking system in 1999 that allowed banks to combine commercial and investment banks in underwriting securities. But before we start, Let's give you guys a little historical perspective. In the early 1900s, commercial banks expanded into securities underwriting, where they guaranteed to furnish a definite sum of money by a definite date to a business or government entity in return for an issue of bonds or stocks. In 1929, when the stock market crashed, it crashed the banking system, in part because of their expansion into securities. As a result, Americans lost faith in our banking system. All banks across the country shut down for four days, and on the fifth day, 4,000 of those banks all across the country never reopened their doors. As a result, in 1933, the United States passed the Glass-Steagall Act, or the Banking Act of 1933. This act prohibited commercial banks from engaging in the investment business. Well, we got out of the depression. Banks rebounded and worked perfectly for decades. One problem. When you forget history, you have a tendency to repeat it, right? I mean, haven't we heard that before? Well. We forgot the crash of the 1920s and just how well Glass-Steagall had helped us over the decades. As a result, in 1999, Congress passed and President Clinton signed the Financial Services Modernization Act. That act effectively annulled the Glass-Steagall Act and once again reopened the doors for the banking community to once again behave in exactly the same manner that caused the meltdown during the Great Depression. That's right, this mess we currently find ourselves in wasn't born in 2008. Oh no, it's rude are from 1999 with the passage of the Financial Services Modernization Act. And in that same year, 1999, Citicorp bought Travelers Insurance and became the conglomerate Citigroup and combined their banking, securities, and insurance services. Up until that point, this type of thing wasn't allowed. In fact, it was illegal. Now, do you feel history racing back? Well, do us a favor. Remember Citigroup. We'll get back to that. Well, as you know, in subsequent years, the global banking system nearly collapsed. Banks and security firms all around the world were bailed out or closed their doors. One of the first ones was Lehman Brothers. Well, they failed and their remnants were purchased or gobbled up by British-owned Barclays Holdings. But they had financial problems of their own. Problems that they wanted to first not disclose to anybody, but second, fix them and fix them as quickly as possible. But what to do, what to do, what to do? They cheated you. Yep, they cheated you and everyone you know. First, they submitted fake LIBOR rates lower than they actually borrowed money at in order to disguise how much trouble they were in. Why that's important to you is the LIBOR rate controls mortgage rates on both first and second mortgages, credit cards, rates that are now family municipalities borrow at, really everything. Now the LIBOR rate controls, and you're not going to believe this, over $350 trillion in money people borrow from all around the world. So screwing with this rate can screw you and literally everybody across the world. Now the LIBOR is the rate at which banks borrow money from each other. As we just showed you, that's an awful lot of money. Now these 16 banks are the ones that set the rate. It's an average of their cost to raise money and all other banks follow suit. Now. On to our second misdeed by Barclays, and again, how it affects you. Now, this one, this one, is really going to knock you out of your chair. Starting in 2005 and going on till, well, it's still going on, and as a means to make back the money that they lost as a result of the 1999 deregulation, they, being Barclays, rigged the LIBOR in whatever way necessary to assure that their bets on derivatives would make them money. This, my friends, is called insider trading, and it's insider trading on a scale the world has never seen. Remember that $350 trillion in borrowed money set by the LIBOR? Well, this made the banks winners, and the rest of us, whose money they used to make their bets, the losers. Here's the deal, and here's why we just seen the tip of the iceberg. Barclays, though they're really big, they're not big enough to manipulate the LIBOR rate alone, but, Remember guys that only 16 banks set the LIBOR rate. Are you sensing any illegal collusion on the insider trading thing? Well, two of those banks on that list are United States banks, one being Chase, 
Yeah, the same chase that just lost billions on risky swaps. The other is Citigroup, the same Citigroup that became a conglomerate underwriting risky securities at the exact moment in 1999 when our safeguard, the Glass-Siegel Act, was repealed. It now turns out that illegally manipulating the LIBOR for the benefit of the biggest banks has jumped the pond we know as the Atlantic Ocean. And their actions at not only causing this mess, but exacerbating the whole thing is more involved than any of us ever knew. So ask yourself this, if this is clearly a US problem as well as a UK problem, why didn't our regulators catch it? Well, they did catch it. The problem of rate fixing came to the attention of the New York Federal Reserve in 2007. See, the New York Fed has jurisdiction over banks because they deal in securities on Wall Street. The problem is they were aware of it and they did nothing about it. Nothing at all. What did they get for their actions? Well, the then head of the New York Federal Reserve, who knew and didn't act, Timothy Geithner, he got promoted to the Secretary of Treasury of the United States of America, where he still currently serves. Is that maddening? Does it make your blood boil? Well, don't worry. Yeah, in the coming days, Congress is gonna parade him before questions and act really, really mad. And they're gonna wag their fingers at him. And then they're gonna do what they're really good at, nothing. Nothing at all.